Hey guys and girls, it's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. Um, got another broken hearted guitar on the bench today. Uh, let's get to work. It's self explanatory. Um, let's get the camera lottery set. Looks pretty good. Yeah, a little bit right there. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that's what you call a fail. So today we're just going to, very nice looking little acoustic guitar. And from what I got, what I gleaned from the person that dropped it off, somebody that I uh, work with, um, uh, it belongs to a significant other and she's broken hearted. So I took a look at it. I'm pretty confident that I can fix this and make this guitar live again. Um, we did one of these recently, I know, but I'm going to do another one. This one's a Luna. Very pretty little guitar. It looks almost like a spalted maple top. I don't know if that's painted on there or whatever, but I've worked on a couple of these Lunas. They're, they're not bad guitars. Um, I can't tell by looking here, but the headstock took a header. And it looks like some of the tuners are bent or whopped out of shape. We won't know until we dismantle if we're going to have to put new tuners or not. Um, they might just be turned or it might be the, the way the headstock is kind of cocked. Um, it, it almost seems like the strings are the only thing holding it on. I'm afraid and I don't want to put the gun on this. We're just going to unwind it. And C, let's get the ones off that want to come off first. Strings, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to try to save them. If we're going to do all this work, we better put a new set of strings on. And this one's separated anyway. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to end up putting new strings on anyway. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this will not separate while we're dismantling it. I don't want it to. Cut them off if they don't want to cooperate. They don't want to cooperate. You don't know who you're messing with. And yeah, it's a tricky operation whenever you see something like this. Now, likely it'll never be perfect. It's not an $8,000 guitar that is 70 years old. So let's just make it playable again and that it's stable and it will be if I have my way with it. Let's just see. Trying not to disturb the headstock as much as I can and get these strings out. think it's going to stay on there and stay together and that's what I'm hoping. I don't want it to detach completely, although sometimes that's what happens. You'll notice again, I'm going to say this, I'm doing this by hand because I don't want to put the gun on there. It's possible this thing it doesn't appear as though because I think the laminate up here is what's holding it together. Um, I hope it just comes undone and behaves. If it does, she will live again. Stand by while I get the rest of these strings off. Um, What has tension on it? Nothing really. Nothing really has any tension on it. Well, maybe I'll just keep the film running. Because all we're going to do is take it apart today and evaluate it and make sure that it's going to cooperate and want to go back together. If it doesn't want to mate back up, there's no sense trying to glue it. it, it, it you never know in, in, until you know. 
And it seems like this type of operation is the order of the day recently. I've, I have t two of them with the same kind of problem, not as severe as this, happened at the other place where I go and subcontract out to. One was a bass guitar and one was an Epiphone Les Paul type guitar. Um, and they both suffered the same fate. Uh, fell down. Headstock didn't quite like it the way it, it hit. And this is what happens. This is the result right here. There is tension on that guy. That's not the only thing holding this girl together. Appears as though not. Get it down to where at least it's not making any noise. Okay, we got all the strings off of the headstock. Something looks wonky here. Right here, I think this tuning peg took a shot. Maybe all three of these. These actually look pretty straight, but man, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell, and I don't want to put any pressure on it. We have to take them all off anyway, and then I'll inspect them one at a time. Um, something's going on here with the top of this thing, too. It's got some warpage in it. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out once we get it strung up. I don't see any separation in the bridge. And that's that's good news. That's always good news. Um, something looked a little wonky here. And now that all the tension is off, it seems to have settled. Now, bracing is supposed to control most of that on an acoustic guitar. This is not a high-end instrument, but I have worked on several of these, and they generally play pretty well. So let's hope we can make this one play pretty well again. Maybe we'll shoot for play really well. Saddle wants to pop out. Put that in there. I do not see anything that scares me with the bridge. Um, although I see some wonkiness here, like there might have been at some point a repair. It, it bulges right here, and it sinks over here and over here. The only place the feeler gauge goes in is right there, and it's very minor. So I think we're going to be okay with that. Uh, okay, let's get to the meat of it. I'm going to pull it down here so what we're working on is in the film. What got, this was the one that I thought might have been the problem. And it looks as though maybe it just got turned. Let's pull them out. We've got no choice at this juncture. Um, I think I'm going to try to get them out the top first. Sorry about that, out of the film. Uh, It's awful tight and wonky. Yeah, and I think it might have gotten bent. Man, this thing is really, really, really flexing a lot. I hope I can get all this stuff off before it lets go. That one's 
going to be trouble. Trying not to put any downward pressure on it. Because the more you can preserve what it is and the way it's holding itself together, the better your end result is going to be. If it comes completely separated, you still hope for a clean break. If it doesn't, wow, these things are really freaking tight in there. What the hell? Where would that be? Like that. This one's settled right down into the clear coat on the headstock. There we go. Well, so far so good. I'm taking them all off because some of them look wonky. The last one I did, I only took these off because that's where the break was, and it seems as though this one's pretty similar. It's still holding on, but not by much. Not by much. I'm hoping for the best. This was the one that looked bent. Of course, every other guitar in, 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 that I ever touch, all of these screws are completely loose. And they don't hold anything. But on this one, because I don't want to put any undue pressure, it's tight as hell. That, there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's nothing wrong with that tuner. And that's the one, that's the real one that I was worried about. Sorry about my head. Um, I, I moved my camera angle to keep my head out of there. The rest of them look pretty good. I don't think anything, any of the tuners got bent, but we'll find out shortly. Jeez. I can't put any down pressure on the screw because I'm really afraid that it's just going to come unraveled. And I think the only thing that's holding it is the laminate and the clear coat on the top side of the headstock. I hope you learned something from this. Be careful with your guitars. Always be careful with your guitars. Don't leave them laying around where they can get bumped in. Around a doorway is the worst place to put any instrument on a guitar stand. Maybe this was just a case of slipped, tripped, fell, stepped on it, it just hit the ground, who knows. But hopefully this instrument will make music again. Bear with me. I know this is tedious, but this is how we do it. I don't know if it's going to allow me to push this back together and hold it in place where the brake is clean. It appears to be. Sorry, am I in the camera? I am. These all look pretty good. I don't think we bent any of the tuners. and These tuners are actually pretty nice. The last one I did, 
Wait, was, the Epic failed. As soon as I fixed it, glued it together, got it to be stable, I went to put the tuners back in and they were garbage. Um, so I ended up putting new tuners on that guitar. And now that guitar lives with one of my customers. And uh, he bought a bass from me. And uh, as a thank you for his patronage, I threw in the dumpster fire guitar that had a broken headstock that I fixed. And uh, I'm so glad to hear that uh, they are working with it, playing with it, and it's making music. Put everything in the baggie because I don't know how long this is going to go on. It might be over before we even start. We don't know. The next step. I'm going to pause really quickly. I want to flip this guitar over and see just how much this thing is moving. And I want to do that off camera because if it breaks off in my hand, I don't want to show that. Say it by. So you will see, I have some clamps laid out and I have my air can. I have looked in there. We have put it back together and then peeled it back open again. And I do that for a reason because I want to make sure that it's going to go back together. It looks very clean, but what I want to do is just blow out any small burrs that would be in there that would get in the way from it mating back together the way that it broke. And I was right. On the other side, the only thing that's holding that headstock on is the laminate, the clear coat, the paint, the laminate, and the, and the clear coat. That's the only thing. And there is a, a hairline fracture right there. It's actually only this little part right here that's holding that headstock on. Um, not afraid. Never be afraid. Pay attention and go slow and these things will usually work out. And I think we're gonna we're gonna have a a good result here. I'm gonna have to spread it open. I hope it doesn't come the rest of the way open. Uh, I'm going to put my googly eyes on and look in there really closely with a light. Make sure there isn't any a cockroach didn't crawl up in there and decide to die. No, well, it looks really good. And I think if we just spread it open slightly, we should be able to get some wood glue up in there, clamp it, and uh, go to town. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be able to. Yeah, that's the only thing holding it is the, the face. Um, let's get some glue out. I test fitted some of the clamps off camera. Um, once it goes back together, there are several ridges across it that are going to line right back up. And that's usually what you hope for. And if it doesn't, if you don't have that, then you're probably going to have a fail. And we might still have a fail. We don't know. Let's get to it. We're going to put a copious amount of wood glue up in there and hope for the best. We're going to get it clamped and we're going to let it sleep overnight. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see in there sitting down. I'd like to have this on camera because it's pretty interesting. So, yeah, I really need to get all the way up in there with this glue and hopefully it won't give me too much squeeze out. And the more you can get in the, the crevice all the way to the back, the better. Because that's going to be the stress point. 
moving forward. Now this wood glue is pretty forgiving. You got 10 or, 10 or 15 minutes before it really starts to get tacky. And that's when you want to work within that time frame and get it applied on both sides all the way down as far down as you can. Now if it was a broken right in half you know it, it's a little easier but I don't want to break it in half if I can avoid that. I really don't want to do that. Get it on every mating surface. I'm going to need more glue. Yeah. Need more glue. Sorry about my head, as always. This is pretty critical stuff. <clears throat> I like it so far. I like it so far. Got the top pretty well done. We're going to have a fair amount of squeeze out, which is going to make for an ugly end product. But if we are really careful with a wet cloth, as it squeezes out, you can use a wet cloth to wipe it off right away so that it doesn't show too much of the crack on the exterior crack. Boy, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're definitely going to have some squeeze out. I guess I was a little overzealous with that last little glue. I saw one dry spot. Probably it'll squeeze itself in there, but I want to make sure. Sorry about my head. Right there. Boy, that should be good. Now, before I clamp that together, I'm going to get rid of the glue. And I'm going to get a wet cloth to get ready to wipe the squeeze out. Stand by. So, yeah, what we're trying to do is, if we haven't clamped it yet, we're trying to clean off as much of the glue that's going to seep out See, all of this up here was from jamming the brush up in there. See, it found a little crack there where I pushed it up in. That's going to help it hold together. may not look great when we get done, but I'm going to try to minimize that once we get it all clamped together. Now comes the fun part. We're going to have a lot of squeeze out. Stand by. I'm going to need a lot more wet paper towels. Get some of it out of the way first. Stand by. I'm going to have to bring some water in. 
Okay, we're going to try to put the first clamp on. I know we're going to get a monster amount of squeeze out, but we're going to try to address it as we go. Stuff is pretty forgiving. Elmer's glue. Let's just hope we don't spill anything. Now, let's get our first clamp on. Let me look at it from this side. I want one right in the middle. There and there. And that should give us a really good clamp. It's a lot of glue. Lots of sharp edges too, trying to grab the trying to grab the paper towel for me. I love that. Just to add on more pressure. See the glue coming out? Amazing. But that's good. If it was broken right off, it would have been, a, I got to say, it probably would have been a little bit easier because I would have been able to paint the right amount of glue. I, I was a little overzealous in how much glue I put up in the thing because I couldn't, I couldn't see both mating surfaces all at once. So, no big deal. No big deal. You see how ugly these jobs can get just that quick? But if you're paying attention, you get the stuff off now and watch. Watch when I when I clamp it again. Even more wants to come out. I think that's the perfect clamping force right there where I'm putting it because it's it is literally pulling it right back together. side here right quick because I'm sure we got the same kind of mess over there. Wet cloth. Elmer's glue is forgiving to a point. I really don't want to have any cleanup as much as possible after it starts to set up. Or once it's set up. Sorry about my head. I know that's an ongoing problem. Yep. Let's get it over here. I think it's going to mate together beautifully. I'm going to have to move the camera over slightly. Get off the end of the bench. clean up some of this glue over here. Wow. This one put me through my paces a little bit. Right there. Yeah. Little squeeze up there. And quite a bit there. And then all the little cracks and crevices are going to try to hold on to that glue. And that's where now is the critical time to try to clean as much of it off as you can, even though it's an impossible task with something like this. I 
It's an impossible task. Because as soon as I squeeze it again, guess what's going to happen? And we got to put more clamps on it too. Don't forget that. <laughs> so far, I think we're we're in the home stretch. Wet cloth. Wet cloth, wet cloth. And the whole time you're trying to watch it and make sure that it doesn't shift one way or the other. You know, follow. like it. I think it's going to behave nicely. I'm almost thinking it may only need just that one clamp because the break was perfect. A half moon right here and everything was right there lined up. So I think this one clamp is going to put enough force on it because the glue is coming out evenly all around the entire fracture. Wow, we went through a half a roll of paper towels. And I'm going to qualify this because there's no way I'm going to get it all. I'd have to sit here for hours because it's going to continue to try to push out. As the, the glue starts to harden, it's going to continue to push out. And the wood, it doesn't like being clamped like that either. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. I'm going to pause really quickly because right now I'm just showing repetitive glue wiping. Stand by. So we have it where we want it. It's going to live like this tonight. Clamped. I've washed it, wiped it. I'm going to give it just another minute or two and then I'm going to try to wipe every crack that I can see again with a wet cloth. Uh, a million of them. As you can see, this is not a perfect science, but you want to try to keep all that off that squeezes out and it will continue to push out. You can't stop it, but you can keep wiping it, wiping it, wiping it. Within an hour, that's going to be set. By tomorrow this time, it will be just as hard as the day it was made. And that's what we're hoping for. Um, and I'm sure we'll be okay. Everything lined up nicely. Um, I really am digging on the repair. I think we're going to get lucky with this one. And sometimes with the repair like this, that's what you need. A lot of know-how, a lot of experience, and a little bit of lady luck. So uh, we're going to call that a success. It's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. Um, another broken-hearted headstock. We'll talk soon. And remember, if you dig what I'm doing, like and subscribe.